before we get into the nuts and bolts of how an aircraft generates lift, let's just take a moment to look into some of the primary forces, the four primary forces that actually act on an aircraft whilst it's in flight. So that's my little airplane model over there. And I'm sorry, I know that's a terrible drawing. It probably looks more like a whale with wings. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we've got four forces that act on an aircraft in flight. So we've got lift, weight, thrust and drag. Lift, which is generated by the wings, weight being the weight of the aircraft. Thrust is the forward force generated by the engines. And we have drag, which is a resistance to uh, motion. Um, this is a resistance posed by the air around the aircraft. When thrust is greater than drag, that's when an aircraft accelerates and vice versa. Lift and weight are typically in balance in flight. Uh, how an aircraft climbs and descends, it's a different story. It's when, uh, you know, the little set of wings on the tail of the aircraft, uh, that's when they come into play. Now we're talking about the climbing, descending, because it's actually um, a function of uh, the pitch attitude of the aircraft, which is controlled by that little set of wings on the back. Um, right, so those are the primary four forces that act on an aircraft at any given point in flight. That's a formula for lift. It looks complicated. Actually, it's not. Let's just break it down and we'll, again, try and keep it as simple as possible. So it's half multiplied by rho, which uh, represents the air density, so the air, um, the density of the air around the aircraft. V square, V stands for velocity, so the speed of the aircraft, square of that. CL, which is the coefficient of lift, which is a function of um, the wings and, uh, you know, the angle against the uh, airflow, which is uh, formed between the wings and the airflow. NS is the surface area of the wings. So these are essentially the four components that have a direct impact on lift. Um, we won't delve any more into this formula, it's just to give you a high level overview of what's involved when we talk about lift. Now let's look at this little diagram over here. This is actually a wing, those wings. It's called an airfoil. And if you, if you notice, the top of this wing is actually got a greater curvature compared to the bottom, which is relatively flat. Now, as an aircraft is moving through air, it's facing relative airflow. So imagine these green lines are the relative airflow. So the aircraft moving through air is being faced by the relative airflow, which is represented by these green lines. Now what's happening is the airflow that's going over the top of the wings essentially has to travel a greater distance to get from the front to the back because of the fact that there is a curvature. So it increases the travel distance for that airflow compared to the bottom, which is essentially, you know, the airflow is essentially just paralleling uh, the, the bottom of the wing, which is quite flat. Now what happens in this process of um, traveling a longer distance is the air has to pick up speed. It's called the Venturi effect. An easier way to explain the Venturi effect is uh, sometimes you may have noticed, you know, whilst standing in an alleyway, which is a narrow passage, we tend to experience uh, more wind compared to being outside of that alleyway. So when we're in a, nas a narrow constricted passage, outside of course, we tend to experience more air, more wind. It's just because of the venturi effect. So the air has to travel at a greater speed, the venturi effect on top of the wing, and this causes a drop in the ambient pressure on top of the wing. We refer to it as a static pressure. Let's call it PS. So increase in speed of the airflow causes a drop in the ambient pressure or the static pressure. Now, as the static pressure drops, it's creating a differential pressure when we compare the pressure on the top to the pressure on the bottom of the wing. So you've got a lower pressure here compared to the bottom of the wing. Now, when we have this differential pressure, it's actually, ex it's creating um, a suction effect on top, right? Be because we've got a, a high pressure on the bottom and we've got a low pressure on the top. So it's having the suction effect, this pull effect on the top. 
and therefore there is this upward force generated on top of the wing which is how lift is generated that's how this works this is an oversimplification of the principle of uh, flight and you know how lift is generated but i hope that made a little bit of sense and um it wasn't too difficult to follow i just thought it might be interesting because uh, i remember uh, you know as a child always wondering you know how these objects you know got airborne it was always very fascinating so i just thought you know it might be interesting to talk about it today but yes uh, thank you very much i hope that wasn't too boring and dry um so yeah uh, i hope you enjoy that and um, I shall see you all in the next one again very soon.